Good morning, readers. Today is Friday, July 23rd, and you're listening to First Chapter Fridays, presented by the Baker Free Library. My name is Juliana, and I am the library's youth services librarian. Welcome to this week's program. Each Friday throughout the summer, I'll be sharing the first chapter of a book with you that explores, in either a big way or a small way, the animal kingdom. If you like today's chapter, you can place a reserve on the featured book using the library's catalog or by calling the library at 224-7113. While you're listening today, feel free to jot down any thoughts, questions, or ideas you have about the story. You can also color or draw, pick up your room, build with Legos, or work on a craft project while you listen. All right, let's jump into this week's story. This week, we take to the skies with a flock of wild pigeons living in New York City and the young human girl who lives among them. This is Koo by Kayla Noel. Koo knows the sky and the factory roof and the cozy old dovecote she calls home. Koo wonders why she can't fly, soar into the air with the rest of her flock. She longs to fly. She hates it when her family leaves her behind. If she could, she'd follow Burr, her favorite, her defender, and find something delicious to eat, like a bagel or a banana, or even better, a donut. If she could, she'd ride the wind up, up, and up. Ku knows the sounds of the city, the commuter trains, the cars and trucks, the beeps and bangs and sirens and rumbles, the occasional voice saying something mysterious, the hustle and bustle far below. It's another world down there, a scary world. It's not the place for her. But when a huge hawk attacks her flock and Burr is badly injured, Ku knows that she needs to get help right away or her best friend will die, even if getting help means leaving the only home she knows and climbing down from the roof, even if it means going to a place Ku can't imagine. Want to hear more of this story? Let's read the first chapter of Ku by Kayla Noel. Once upon a time. April breezes, warm and mild as clean laundry, fluttered across the dark rail yard. The trains rested on their hushed tracks. In an hour, dawn would break, and the Monday morning commute would begin. For now, no people were about, not even the workers in big helmets and neon vests who tended the yard overnight. The pigeons who lived on the roof of the abandoned factory beside the yard were deep in slumber, too all but one. A charcoal dark yearling with a white stripe across his wings couldn't sleep. Instead, he roamed around the alley that ran next to the factory, peering up at the small hut that glowed there. Sometimes things came flying from the hut's windows, candy bar wrappers, banana peels, old newspapers, and food. Inside, the night watchman munched on a strawberry glazed from donut time, the shop round the corner. On the tiny television screen perched on his desk, a weather reporter pointed to green and red radar clouds of rain on their way to the city. Reception was terrible, and the picture kept going gray. The donut was stale. Teetering atop the TV, the watchman's coffee maker hissed and dripped. Hardly anyone came into the factory yard through the back alley. Most nights the guard dozed, only sputtering awake when his walkie-talkie crackled with chatter from the rail yard crews. The messages were never for him. The weather report ended, and a new segment about the dangers of sugar began. The guard stopped chewing to look down at his belly. He slid open the tiny window over his shoulder and tossed the strawberry donut into the darkness. Eyes tugging shut, he sighed, and soon even the coffee pot's beep as it finished brewing wasn't enough to wake him.
Nestled in her warm bundle, calm in the early morning shadows, the baby blinked open her eyes. Above her was the purplish morning sky. Her eyes were too new to focus on the faint stars scattered in their spring constellations. A train screeched lightly in the distance, and she flinched. But she didn't cry. She flexed her plump fingers and waited. While the guard dozed in ignorance and her mother's footsteps faded into silence, one of the strangest, most miraculous, most uncanny events in city history unfolded in the little alley beside the rail yard. The pigeon stared into the face of the baby. The baby stared back at the pigeon. The pigeon zoomed up to the dovecote on the roof where his flock slept and woke them. Not everyone thought his plan was a good one, but some of them were curious enough to skim down and see what he meant. An abandoned human swab. Strange indeed. As a dozen birds scrutinized her, the baby's eyes widened. Then she smiled. Rain soon, said Burr, the pigeon with the white-stripped wing. He could smell it in the air. Needs shelter, squab. True, a burly pigeon named Hoop said. Bad for squabs, Rain. Lift squab up, us, Burr said. Take her to Dovecote, us. The others hesitated. Right, Burr is, said Pim, a very old bird. Needs care, hurry. While the baby turned her small head every which way to look, twelve pigeons nicked their beaks into her bundle. Some grasped her wood shawl, others the soft pick blanket sandwiched beneath. Two or three managed to hook into the cotton romper she wore snugly wrapped around her body. The pigeons began to flap their wings, soothing as a swaying cradle. Faster and faster they flapped. Loose feathers spiraled into the darkness. They flapped still harder. A warm breeze tumbled down the alley, tickling the weeds as it went. When it reached the birds, it pushed under their wings. The babies swaddling tight in their beaks, the wind whistled through their feathers, the pigeons lifted off. In his hut, the dozing night watchman stirred. What was that rustling? He stood up, scattering donut crumbs from his lap and knocking an empty coffee mug to the floor. Outside, the pigeons startled at the noise. One lost grip of the shawl in his beak, and the bundle shuddered. Burr flapped his wings faster. Never had he flown so hard. The birds recovered. Hoisting the bundle in spurts and staggers, they heaved above the watchman's hut, over the chain-link fence, up and up and up. The pigeons steered a few feet to the left and landed on the roof outside the doorway of their cozy dovecote. The baby opened her eyes and looked around at her new home. And that's the end of the first chapter, readers. If you'd like to hear more of this story, call the library or visit bowbakerfreelibrary.org to reserve Coup by Kayla Noel. To hear the rest of this summer's featured titles, search for First Chapter Fridays on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you like to tune in. You can also view the library's entire catalog of episodes, past and present, at anchor.fm slash bfl5 or visit the library's website for the full archive. Thank you for listening to this episode of First Chapter Fridays. Tune in again next week for another great story.